So we are we are meeting. Um, do I have a motion to approve Susan's minutes of our meeting of November 20th? Sure, I have a motion. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Um, okay, great. So the center school, um, if, if it's okay, I'll just start with what I know. Um, I, you all know that the town received two responses to its request for proposal. I sent them out to you. Um, uh, the select, I, 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 been in touch with Brian, who is has recommended or will recommend, I guess, on Thursday when the select board meets that a committee be constituted to review the proposals, make recommendations, and make recommendations to the select board. And he's uh, recommending representatives of certain committees, um, including the Historical Commission. No surprise. Um, I, maybe I'll just, oh, now two people have come in. Goodness. Mm -hmm. We're popular tonight. We are. And it's Judy. Stephen, you have to understand this is very exciting for us to have somebody. This is unbelievable that we have two guests. <laughs> no, this is I don't think we've ever had two guests before at the historical commission. Judy, we we when Allison spoke with you, we started, we've approved the minutes, and we're just talking to start about the center school. We're oh, getting hello. Steve, Mike, Sell, Mike, Sell, and, and Suzanne. Okay, great. My apologies. No, not at all. So I, I was just saying we have two proposals. I passed them on to the, um, to the members of the commission. They are public information. Anybody can get them from town offices. Um, and uh, I believe, I hope that the that the select board will constitute the committee to review the proposals on. Uh, Thursday night when they meet, um, Brian is recommending that we be represented and um, just to cut to the chase. I would like to be the <laughs> historical commission's representative to the committee, but I will happily hear if anybody else is strongly interested in doing that. If you want to do it, Donna, I think it's yours. It's somebody else. I don't want to rip your fun, Donna. You go ahead. Okay, it will be fun. I'm not going to do it. Um, it would it would be. Awkward for me to do it with Fred on the board. Okay. And Judy, you've already said no yep. to me privately. Um, okay, so that's what I know. Uh, is Are there other things people want to talk about regarding the Sunday school other than it is raining unbelievably and the roof is the roof? <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, Stephen Hussey. <laughs> yeah, I, I the reason I came to the meeting was I was I I only just found out on Wednesday, which was the day the the R, RPFs were were closed, that this that the building was available. Um, and and then I saw that it was on your agenda, and I wondered. I thought perhaps that the historical commission was actually interested in in uh, in the building itself. Is that is that the case? We are a part of town government. The Historical Commission is uh, like the Conservation Commission or the Planning Board or the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, oh. uh, you may be thinking of the separately incorporated Historical Society. This right. is confusing. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, you don't have to be sorry at all. I'm just. Everybody I'm just. I, I'm. I'm thinking that may be why you're asking the question you're uh, you've asked. Yeah, because yeah. I, I'm I'm the founder of Four Wind School, and we've been up in Gill in Gill's old Riverside building for 20, 20, 21 years now, and we've shared that building with the historical society. And we're looking at trying to find a location further down the valley, and that's why I was I, I came to the meeting thinking that if the historical society were interested in that building, that we might be able to work out a, a similar situation there, where where our rent actually help the historical society maintain the building and uh and and give them space for their exhibits and their and their records and whatnot but if that's not the case then that, that is not the case <laughs> okay all right well that's that's all that's the only question i had so, I'll so you're not a waitley resident you're in gill right okay. right well, okay good luck to you with your quest okay, yes good luck yeah, <laughs> no. thank you very much. I'll leave you You're to welcome. you.
Bye-bye. Bye. And, and Steve and Suzanne, did you want to talk about this topic or are you simply interested in what we're up to? Just interested in, in, in what you're up to. Okay, okay. Um, any other comments? Any, uh, any comments on the proposals that are pertinent now at this point? Or I thought it was nice that they were so different. Excellent in their difference. Yes, star starkly different on many different, uh, from many different points of view, I think. And neither presented um, that the milk bottle was an obstacle. No. Which which was a relief. Yes, yes. Um, so what all that I've done so far is to scan them and to pull out the three pages of um, criteria that are embed embedded in the town's RFP, um, which I've done something with. Um, uh, they are pages 15 to 17 of the RFP. And, you know, I'm assuming those will be used to shape the, the review, or at least to conclude the review. You know, I don't know how the rest of the committee will be formed, but if they want members of the public, Jenny Morrison was chair of the study committee, and I think she would be an excellent person to be on. Is it Morrison? Morrison? Yes, she's she Morrison. Yeah, two R's, one S. Um, uh, I, she's I very interested in the building. Put it that way. So, As, um, so if they're if they're looking for so, a member of the public, I can I can email Brian. But I think you should email Brian because I don't okay. think it's our prerogative to nominate. Um, no, I I, just, I, I'm, just I, I know you're just thinking thought. out loud. Um, I, I know well, hopefully, that hopefully they will remember that there was a committee that, you know, oh, they know, yeah, you know, a couple of years ago, they will remember that who was on that committee and assume that they might be interested. Right. Um, I'll, the, I'll try to remember to email Brian. Yeah. Um, he is suggesting, sorry, I was hunting for Brian's response to my what's happening about the review process. He is, at least as of the 4th of December, he was planning to suggest a select board member, a member of this committee, a planning board member himself as town administrator and one other person. Um, and five people is plenty, <laughs> you know, so it's... Um, and I, I don't actually know the timeline. I don't think that I don't think a timeline is specified in the request for proposals, but I'm assuming we want it to be rather quick. Yeah. Um, any other discussion on this matter now? Okay. No. Uh, let's go on to the historic preservation applications for CPA funding, which I sent to you all. Um, there were three. Uh, the first is the uh, request from the library um, for a small amount of money, 6,500, I believe, to uh, seal the deteriorating brick in the library. And um, I'm sort of losing my voice. So, Judy, would you mind? <laughs> <laughs> reporting the CPA, the CPC, um, or summarizing the CPC discussion on this matter? No, um, the, they wanted to seal the brick. I don't know if you remember from the time we did the area form, but the building was originally white. It was intended to be white to blend in with the residential structures on the street. And at least through the bicentennial, it was white. At some point after that, and nobody seems to be sure when, um, it was sandblasted to get rid of the paint. The paint in the photos from the bicentennial didn't look all that great. So it, it might have been fairly close to that time. And um, the trustees are, I think, being very conscientious about the building and taking care of it. 
and they're concerned that the brick is eroding and they would like to apply a sealant. And they have done research and found what's evidently a very good one. We at the CPC got stuck or discussed whether this is maintenance or pres real preservation and talked about the fact that, you know, as, as I think most of you know, maintenance isn't an allowable CPC, CPA expense. So evidently this sealant has a life of eight to 12 years, which we felt was pretty much in line with a coat of paint in terms of its longevity. And painting, we have the CPA, CPC has always felt was maintenance, you know, just routine painting. I think we justified it for the town hall based on the fact that there was a whole lot of lead removal involved, which changed the category of it quite a bit. Well, and we also justified it since most of the town hall was painted in 2013, five years before the it was restored, the building was restored because it was a stabilizing um, well, factor, but, uh, you know, a bit at least, I certainly see. certainly on That's those window frames. It, but I think without the lead, yeah. we would have had a, a very hard time. So the CPAC has determined that this is maintenance and there, Alan Sanderson is going to inform Bob Smith of that maintenance and therefore not eligible. Um, thank you. Um, so the second historic preservation proposal is, uh, as you saw, a proposal that Brian Dominus submitted really as a placeholder for some funding to stabilize the center school in the event that no uh, responses were received to the RFP. Um, it, just to remind everybody the the way the CPC works is that if a reasonably good initial proposal is submitted, um, applicants have up to 60 days to flesh it out and answer any questions that are asked. Um, it may be that this proposal simply becomes moot um, or it may not. Donna, you broke up when you said who suggested that. I couldn't hear it. Request? Uh, Brian Dominus oh. submitted the request. Oh, Brian did. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, and as you know, we hadn't seen it. I think he was having um, an understandable last minute worry about what the heck we would do, we the town, if nobody has expressed interest in the building. Um, and these rainstorms are not helping. So that's that. We don't have to do anything about that. The, the third, um, unless anyone want, thinks we need to do anything about it, just to be clear. I don't think there's any doubt that the building no. is applicable. So, so that would yes. be the only thing. Yes, we there, is no, there is no doubt that the building is applicable or eligible. Um, so uh, the third is the proposal that, that we submitted, um, Judy, having done all the work, to restore the sills of the yellow barn, um, which we had all seen before it went in. And I think the only thing that we should spend a few or some time discussing is that it was submitted with two options. The less expensive one to do the sill repair with screws and um, steel, with screws and steel, and the slightly more expensive one, um, to use uh, mortise and tenon joint work and wooden pegs as is true for the original barn. Um, I have one question for you, Judy, about that, but let me wait and see if other people have comments or questions about that. Well, maybe- or about one, the application in general. That changed was that Nicholas raised the estimate on the more expensive option to $6,500 from the 6,000 that he quoted us originally. And so the 7,200 upper limit that is in includes an, an inflationary. Go ahead, contingency. contingency. Yeah, contingency. Um, uh, so my question, Judy, is that you said in the proposal that both methods meet the secretary's standards and you know, the secretary's standards are 400 pages long and, and I, I I'm not challenging you. I simply couldn't find 
the, a reference that explained how um, the screw and steel solution would be eligible. So just, you well, obviously I, did. Well, no, I think it's more common sense. I think the the intent of the of the standards is to use historic materials um, in in the basic construction, but I don't think there's anything, as I said at the CPC meeting, that requires that the hardware that's used also be entirely, or the methodology, like crafting mortise and tenon joints, um, also be entirely historical. Um, and I think the example that I used there is that when we talked about approving the windows for town hall, um, we knew that the chains and the weights that were used for the, the sash weights, the, yeah, the sash weights were going to be replaced. Boy, and, those and must have been significant. Because the windows are big, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Well, and certainly that was, and or at least they were going to be done in different materials. If there were several options, but none of them, including the included using precisely, they didn't have lead. the rope for the or the lead. You know, it was going to be <laughs> very different. Um, and in the church windows, uh, the sash weights come out totally, and they're using um, spring, some sort of balance hardware on the interior. Right. That is an interesting dilemma, though, that gray area between yeah. restoring um, I, it to a period think, and using that period's technology. I think both well, angle irons and metal screws existed in the 1850s. There's no, no doubt about that. I think they were just not common enough around here to have been used. Right, right. Well, and I was thinking back, and Allison, maybe... I didn't do my homework, so apologies, but uh, could you refresh our memory on the um, the restoration of the Quanquant barn, the materials and silo. technology silo. that were used? The silo, you mean? The silo, sorry, sorry, the silo, I apologize. Yeah. Uh, you're asking, so we, it, that's, again, that's that's very interesting. So it's made of ceramic blocks that were baked in a kiln in Pittsburgh, you know, and glazed. But in order to restore the damaged blocks, we weren't gonna bake new tiles. That technology is not available to do, especially if you only need a certain number of them. So that was replaced with um, modern concrete material that was tinted to match the color that could be inserted into that space. So it's not a good analogy because well, it's it's the same uh, in the sense that you, area it, of, yeah yeah I, I mean you and you can't you, get you can't buy them you can't make them you have to match them and 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 then the stabilization of just the joints you know all the joints were cleaned out and re right but with with contemporary mortar not the mortar that was used a hundred years ago because right right it's aesthetic contemporary that's the mortar that I think is more analogous. Yeah, okay, so it's contemporary mortar that's made to flex, you know, and, and weather better than what they right. had 100 years ago. Right. I should okay. I should add Nicholas's comments. He, he said he thought mortise and tenon was a bit precious for this building, which I thought was an interesting word. Yeah, um, yeah. And I, the way no, I, 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 I've had three conversations with him about this, and he feels quite strongly about it. <laughs> well, you know, this is in fact a working barn. If if this were being preserved for the historical society as the a museum, museum, right. and an architectural museum, you would use mortise and tenon and pay for it. And you know, it's not a huge amount of money, but but. Two thousand dollars or twenty five hundred dollars. That's one percent of the CPA budget for the year. So it's not. Is there well any, another is another way to look at it is that using uh, the original technologies increases the scale of the project by about fifty percent. The cost of the project by about fifty percent. Yeah. I, I yeah. mean, my personal inclination is very much to be 
like the idea of the original woodworking style, but I also think, you know, it's a barn, a barn that is used to store the highway department and the cemetery commissioners commission's vehicles and equipment. It, it's not, as Judy said, a museum where a lot of people are looking at the and if they work. ever get another storage place, it, they'll rent it for tobacco again, as they did before they started to use it for storage. So yeah, it was used for for tobacco ten years ago. It was really used until the um, until we removed the barn next to the town hall, and that was only in twenty seventeen. Yeah, it was used for tobacco. Um, Does one method make a difference in length of life of the uh, of the repair? Yeah. Is more centennial a longer lasting solution than the, the metal and other ones? I don't think so. Yeah. Is the have they do we know if they've ever been repaired before? I mean, uh, let me ask we the question know. differently. Have they lasted for 175 years? <laughs> I don't think we know. Yeah. Yeah. And Alan, remember Alan Sanderson, who chairs the CPC, asked if we had you if if screws and if modern technologies had been used anywhere else in the barn. And I I, I actually I, haven't looked. Yeah, yeah. I mean, exactly. It would take a field. It would take a site work because site examination because no one would know. Um, I think it would be good. This is a little awkward since we've submitted a proposal which has a choice in it, but I think it would be good either now or by a month from now if if we expressed an opinion about this. Well, I, mean, I would someone will that have to do yeah. either that or we can revise we can revise the submission. Yeah. Well, is there a, is there something to be said for creating a precedent? You know, is this the last sill that's going to rot out in this barn? You know, if you do it this way, are you are you making a precedent that it should be repaired? Probably. probably. Yeah, well. Nobody will remember. Susan might remember. <laughs> well, I'm thinking it'll be 25 years from now. And I know, I know. Anybody I know. We'll on any dead. of the committees won't have any record. We'll be, we'll be dead. Well, there'll be a new um, technology, you know, it'll be. It, yeah. it, or the water will rise so high that it become a moot point. <laughs> it's not gonna, hopefully <laughs> no. it won't reach that place. No, I know I was being, <laughs> I, being hyperbolic. That'll be, that would be, that would be <laughs> biblical. Yeah, exactly. You know, we exactly. only got 2.9 inches of rain. I think it, it's amazing how they must have gotten more upstream. Totally, up. the, the whole Deerfield watershed got hammered again. I will I will send you all after the meeting Doug Coldwell's video of Westbrook. It's pretty bad. Well, I've got one of that too. Yeah, it's it was yeah. pretty bad. Yeah. Um all right. Is anyone uh willing to is anyone prepared to have an opinion about this today? Or do we want to think about it for another month? Do a little site visit, which anyone can do. Well, I guess anyone who can get it, would be it doesn't seem like anybody feels very strongly that it be done, Mortis and Tenon. And if no one feels strongly about it, then we should go with the less expensive way to do it. I was going to move to do it the cheaper option if nobody objected or if nobody wanted more time. Yeah, I, I agree with that logic that if nobody is feeling strongly, that it's worth it for the money, then we should shouldn't spend the money. Yeah, I agree. I think um, I think it, and I don't want to dump all of this on you, Judy, but I think it, you're probably right that the proposal should then be revised, and I think we should be quite explicit about why it is we think this twenty first well. <laughs> It's early not. the early 20th century <laughs> technology it's is, not this was a not technology that was available in the 19th century that's why that's why i was i was i was correcting myself yeah yeah um 
it's yeah it's interesting because the nails in our house are all hand-hewn nails which was built just 25 years before that barn but i suppose that doesn't mean that other nails were not available at the time well at i any think rate, the at any rate was a stronger a stronger option then right Probably. i i i'm not thinking that it isn't that i think it's too terribly important for this project it's that um in terms of setting precedent i think we should be clear about why we think this is okay so that it doesn't come back to bite us when somebody wants to you know replace their wooden porch with pvc <laughs> plastic or something that we wouldn't think was a good idea um but okay have we just agreed then has everyone agreed yep. i think i'm the only slide yep. okay all right um judy please say so if you need help or no, I, don't. I i i'm a little i think there's a danger in being overly descriptive i will try and craft it mm -hmm. to say get the point across without going into too much detail mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um okay so let's go on to the historic preservation priorities in the plan which i put in an email to all of you so we wouldn't be scrabbling around trying to find it does everybody have that i i don't i'm sorry i sort of got here it's in the I email that i that i sent on thursday um, yeah, got it. I think we've already decided to add a reference to archaeological resources, but I didn't. I don't have a clear sense of where we were going to add it. I, I assume it's at least in the in the first. Is it in the first bullet point? Yeah, I think we had talked about putting it in the first one. Right. So yeah. So. So it now reads, since Judy doesn't have it in front of her, preserve and rehabilitate historically significant building structures and landscapes in Waitley. Um, building structures. Archeolo we were going to Archeo insert Archaeological resources. Landscape. Is that yeah. what we decided? Mm -hmm. Okay. Could you help me in the minutes are you saying that's in the first section? It's the first of the five bullets. Okay. It's the first of the five bullet points. Okay. So building structures, comma, archaeological resources and landscapes is the edit on that. And then the question, Allison, you had raised the question of whether we could use um, CPA resources to survey. I believe you were thinking about archaeological resources. And, and was, she yes, has confirmed that we can. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So um, uh, I think that could be either added to the update the existing inventory, so on and so forth, or it could be its own bullet point. Um, Why wouldn't it be included in the update existing inventory? Was the argument for having it separate? Well, Is there aren't any. Mean? There aren't any archaeological resources in the existing inventory, or the ones that there. The ones that are, um, the state historical commission has redacted from the public copies. I think this is more a quest for things that we don't know about as opposed to defining the history for the ones that we do, which is the way right. the inventory is structured. But uh, but I've forgotten, were we, were we interested in surveying only archeological resources or suggesting that we'd like- we'd And like those could be historic or prehistoric, you know, it right. doesn't have right. to be prehistoric. Right. 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 You know, you could be go look for the fort, you know, in, in 
on Chestnut Plain Road, that would be an historic resource if you decided you wanted to locate it. The stockade. Yeah, you mean stockade. the stockade. Yeah. yeah. Well, does, doesn't archaeological about... cover both? Or I line? think archaeological covers both historic and prehistoric. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And includes things underwater as well as underground. Why don't you just add to the bullet point and um, conducting surveys for and conducting archaeological resource surveys? added to the to the inventory bullet point. So it now reads update the existing inventory of historic structures, buildings and houses, including tobacco barns, mill sites and stone walls. And conducting surveys for well we could just say and just to keep the verb tense consistent and survey archaeological resources. Yeah. Survey and document. I like the addition of the word document. Yeah. Otherwise, survey. Isn't survey just a tool to update you know, the inventory? We need to do the surveys to know what we have. Then we need to inventory. Well, I mean, well, now you have to decide whether you're going to explore that. For example, yeah. if if they decided to put a new exit ramp off 91 and it was going to go through the uh, uh, next to LaSalle's, you know, I wish they'd done it when they did put in 91. You know, that's right on top of the crafts kiln sites. You know, you might want to survey there before they come with the bulldozers. Maybe you don't find anything. Maybe you do. You know, it, it, you kind of have to take it from there. But it would be good to know. Right, Alan, do you have a better example? Oh, yeah. No, that's a good one, actually. I mean, the the missing pottery sites are would have been good to know about. Um, so that's a historic example. It doesn't have to be prehistoric. Well, it also and, and would you call I would call that historic and not archaeological. Well, no, no, we're talking well, about things that are unseen and unknown. Things that are unknown. I see, and that makes them archaeological. Okay. Yes. Okay. So. So leave the ex fifth bullet point as is, put a comma after so stone walls and say comma and survey and document archeological resources. That covers it. Sure. Yep. All right, so oh. I'm. I I'm doing this for the note taker. <laughs> That's what I'm being so. so. This is in the fifth bullet point we're adding and the sentence about updating existing inventory and survey and document archaeological resources. Yeah. Okay. That helps. I'm sorry, I can't look at all these documents at the same time. No, I know. I know. That's why I, I have all, I have all my devices spread all over my desk. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Okay. I um, see no harm in doing this. You know, it, maybe it'll never happen. Maybe we'll never do anything, but there it right. is in case we do. Right. Exactly downside to putting it in no okay great um that's great so um we have time to talk about the north street project if um don't we it's up to you which judy offered to um postpone again um maybe actually maybe i'll just um ask because we we have to submit our budget request for FY25 for the Historical Commission. We talked about this before. Our budget is $200 a year. It's been $200 a year since before Alan joined the Historical Commission. So I'm thinking it's 25, 30 years longer. We're the, we are the best bargain. <laughs> um, I, I, does anyone have any wish or rationale to ask for more than two hundred dollars? I think is the question. But there are any times in the past that we have actually exceeded that amount or asked for more money? Well, the only time that I remember in my when did you I think 
in my 10, 11, 12 years on the committee was that we use the $200 to remember that we had for the town safe, the conservator who is over in Essex wanted reasonably some money to come over and look at it. And we said to the CPC, we have $200, will you come up with the rest of it? Which they did. It was less than $1,000 in total. Mm -hmm. um, no, I mean, we've never, well, I mean, of course, we've never exceeded it because there'd be no me method <laughs> to exceed it. <laughs> but um, but well, uh, that's the only time anything, I would, you know, that if we ever wanted to publish anything, that would be a reason to right. use some money. Right. We my, don't other have thought, my other thought is if we ever wanted to do a mailing to, for some reason to all the households in town, that's more like five hundred dollars just postage because postage has gone up so much. Yeah. Well, I have fifty or sixty stamps because that's what I do. <laughs> is just keep buying stamps. I can. I it's across the room, but I keep them very carefully. I do not use the historical commission stamps. <laughs> no. You're hoarding. You're hoarding stamps. Well, they're forever, right? It doesn't hurt. Oh, I hope. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess the one thing if a mailing is a reasonable one, my guess is we anything important enough to go out to all the town or I don't know, a logical mailing would be if you wanted to take one of the area, say the North Street area form once we get it done and see if it qualifies as a National Register District. I don't know that it would even, but just mm -hmm. assume that it did and we wanted to to get, you need something like 90% of the owners in the district to agree hmm. for the National Register listing. Um, so we would need to campaign for that, but we would know in advance that we're gonna do that. And we um, have plenty of, we have, and and paying, it, it would literally just have to be the the owners in the North Street area. Yeah. Well, well we've then, already, then goes, we've already done goes, that uh, once because Susan sent out. Say, yeah, it, it was only, was it 30 or 40 households, Susan, when you sent I don't out even the, think we um, need stamps, honestly. Yeah, that's true. Okay. <laughs> right. I, I mean, yeah. that by email or kind of websites. Or flyover right. and airdrop. Well, but it's it's an example. It's probably true of any neighborhood in town that we could. Right, right. I, I mean, it, it makes me think, I can't think of any rationale to ask for, you know, $250 and have a whole discussion about that that's um, we don't want to why have is your budget going up by 50 percent yeah 20%. exactly why i would i would have to hear that you know your budget's going up by 25 percent this is right. very bad <laughs> no i mean i could play so i i think what it made me think since we are always asked in late november and december about the budget is that maybe in the next 12 months maybe in the next nine or ten months we should have a bit of a conversation about whether there is a larger project that we'd like to take on a larger with expenses, you know, um, cause I can't think of any rationale for asking for it in the abstract. So, uh, well, one of the joys of the CPA that you have an administrative expenses off of us mostly. Yeah. Or, yeah. or they, they yeah. would fund most of our projects, but not all probably. Right, right. Um, so is it okay with everybody if we just renew the $200 request? Why well, do it? Okay. Yep, I'm okay with that. Thanks. Alan, I can't remember you ever asking us this, but you must have. I think I just assumed it was never going to change unless we had some special project to okay. Okay. operate. Um, and at the at the speed that we usually work on things too, we would have a year of advance. Right. Yeah. right. Like we knew right. that we suddenly cooked up a big idea. We could probably game it so that we get our request in. And we'd have then we'd have a reason to give them too. Exactly. You'd have an answer to the question about why is your budget doubling? Well, because we have this project. Right. And the and the explanation that we insist on principle that it double every 30 years. It's not gonna, whether it needs it or not whether we need it or not yes exactly <laughs> um okay 
the North Street area form. It's 545. I, I think our aim is to volunteer to take on some tasks that will get so us closer to the area research pair do enough research on the top on various topics to create two or three sentences on each um it, remind us um does everybody have judy's one page outline or it's attached to my ridiculous email with all these attachments um what's a list of things like uh dairies so there are several dairy farms you could research or orchards or the campground or mm. um or the industries that were there and so what you're probably creating is maybe three pages in total or two or three pages to cover the whole history of, of so the his just just give a sense you know the historical narrative is the is what we're talking historical about. Narrative. Okay. Um, so it doesn't have to be in depth, but it should be, you know, some idea of if you know when the dairy started or or what their claim to fame was or um, when the cider mill was there. Just who whose it was where it was. Uh... Donna, we, we did a little bit of this when we were spelunking the newspaper yeah. archives. For hidden in, history. For hidden history and also in thinking mm -hmm. about Roaring Brook. So we have some information about Roaring Brook Farm, for example, from Sylvia. Right. Right. We have um, information about uh, the Baroness Dairy, Hillside Dairy. We have on on hidden history. We have Quan Quan Fairview and Hillside. But um, but I've got I mean I've got my folders and piles of newspaper yeah. articles all related to that. It would be pretty easy to access. I'm not sure though, Judy. You know how how precise you need to be um, uh, about exactly what year something started. That the, the beginnings of these things are more murky. No, I don't it, think it needs to be that precise. Okay. Nobody is going to. This is. If you said the early twenties, like, or the you know that would be good enough. Yeah. Okay. These things are intended to document a little bit what went on. They're not supposed to be exhaustive. Re you know, obviously, you could write a. Right. They're not dissertations on any of these topics. It's not supposed yeah. to be like that. It's just supposed to be, I guess, a survey is is the right. right and 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 we should look and I, I did not pull these out, but many months ago I asked Peter Stott at um, the Mass Historical Commission for examples of area forms in farming areas that he liked and didn't like. And he sent us some good examples. And I why don't I um, that would well, be helpful. I think it's why, do, why don't I unearth that? <laughs> if you just send me what you have, you know, if you've got yeah. a paragraph here, a paragraph there, I can try and weave them together. Um, well, I was going to see if that's if that's all that if that would be helpful, then I think we could each do that. I was going to say that you had ne nicely divided your notes into 18th, 19th, 20th, and 21st centuries, and we could <laughs> we could divide them, you know, um, but we don't have to. Allison, what do you want to do? What do you? Well, let's, I, let's... I can't look at the list right now. Um, but but I'm happy to, uh, as I say, review what I already have in those various folders and contribute that. I think it does cover uh, the dairies. Um, and I can certainly write about Quan Quan. That's, you know, that's not a problem. You know quite a bit, a bit about the cider mill, don't you? I don't know quite a bit about it. I know, okay. I know I I read, you know, parts of the diaries, but I but not enough to write an overview. Okay. Like when it started, I don't know. I know when it appears on maps, but I don't know when it started. Well, that's 
you know, you, you're positioning it in a- Derica would know. I mean, I, would ask, I could ask Derica. She would know. Her, yeah. I think I know a fair amount about the, the um, wallet factory. I don't know anything about the tannery. But we could just say it was there. I mean, or, would it would it be helpful if I if I go through the newspaper articles and um, divide them into categories and send them to you guys or to yeah. you? Would you like to see? Yeah. It's kind of interesting that'd to be, see. That'd be great. All right, I'll send that, them out. That's a good that's that starting point to see what that. we already have rather yeah, than reinventing the wheel. Yeah. Um, we've decided this area is not to include Roaring Brook, correct? That's, yes. Yes, I think so. Okay. okay. By, by 20th first century nursery, do you mean Nasami? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I will take a stab at that. Well, you have that it's, document. It's actually 20. Well, we have Mark Walmsley's gorgeous say. document yeah. about it that is, you know, 60 pages illustrated. <laughs> about it but you want a couple of sentences yeah yeah well nancy august is is still in sunderland mm -hmm. so well and some of well, the, we some interviewed of the, her for our project so we have we have all of that material donna we, we do yeah, and 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 we, and we have the notes far. about nasami and its history that are summarized at the end of the and the wall yeah, and that's the all you need Warren it's Park all that's exhibit. all done yeah um, so, so Judy, you don't mind if you get materials that are somewhat overlapping? No. Okay. Well, because well, one thing became another thing, which was eaten by two things. They are overlapping. Right. History is like that. Messy. Overlapping and messy. And messy. <laughs> yeah. Susan I'm, Allen, do you want to have a role in this, or I, I can. I'm. I can't pull up the, uh, uh, the thing from Judy at this point, but um, I'm gonna have yeah. a couple of minutes because I have a another meeting shortly after this one. So. I know she sent it because we asked because I didn't have it the last time we talked, and she did send it again. It's in my email down. Yeah, yeah I have it somewhere here. But well, it's also attached to the it. message I sent on, to you all on Thursday. So you can you can find it there. Yeah, yeah. I am so happy to help with whatever wherever there's a gap. I don't have a particular area that I'm knowledgeable about. So if I have to you know, learn about something from scratch, give me one that nobody knows anything about, and I can work on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Should we? Should we? Um, famous famous knitters on North Street. <laughs> oh, I bet there were a lot of those. <laughs> Um, I would suggest, just because this is who I am, that we attempt to um, uh, get some draft material to Judy, either by our January or February meeting, so we can kind of move this along a little. Does anybody have wish to vote for January, February, or some other date? I would suggest February, because... February? Okay. This will mean, okay. because we're... We get our stuff, and then we have time to look at it. Yeah. Okay. So, so because we're all still undergraduates at heart, this will mean that on the night midnight on February eighteenth, emails will be going in your direction. Right? No doubt. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, any other business? Okay. Well, it's. Um, our next meeting is on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, January 15th, unless somebody has a reason to, for, to want us to change that. Okay. It's fine. I guess that's it then. Okay. Thank you. I hope that nice man in Gill solves his problem. <laughs> He'll be calling your house in about five minutes to looking for the historical society. Mm -hmm. It's confusing. And that'll be really confused. No, it, I mean, I it is. The it four is wing school building is bigger than the one, than the center school. By by a factor of some, yeah. Well, not, yeah. not hugely bigger, but I mean, you drive by it on, on Route 2. Um, 
well, as you as you will remember, four years ago, a now former member of the select board was insisting again and again and again the historical society should take the center school building and make something of it. I guess with the million and a half to two million dollars they did not have. Well, we but, would have to increase our budget, wouldn't we? <laughs> no, not us. Sorry, did I say no. <laughs> historical commission? I meant the historical society. I'm sorry, I misspoke. Sorry. Okay. Well, with a with a mega donor, we could do that. But... Could have right. done that. A, a mega donor in Waitley is somebody who cracks the five figure mark, not the right. Well, not there are the, you know. So, um, okay. Uh, well, thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you. If you're having have a holiday, holiday, have fun. <laughs> I will have to. Good night. Thanks, all. Good night. Bye.